and Afri Forum will go to the High Court in Pretoria today for their case against the Tourism Department and Minister Mamaloko Kuban Gobani. The two groups instituted legal action after unsuccessful talks with the Minister about funding from the Tourism Equity Fund to all tourism businesses. The 1.2 billion Tourism Equity Fund was launched by the Department in January in partnership with the Small Enterprise Finance Agency as a new financial support mechanism to stimulate investment and uh, transform, transformation in the tourism sector. Our reporter, Patricia Fesachi, is at the court. Let's cross live to her now. A very good morning to you, uh, Patricia. Just remind us of the merits of this, uh, this case and where, what, where it stems from. Good morning, uh, Desiree, and to our viewers. The matter has stand down uh, uh, technically postponed to this uh, Friday, this coming Friday. It was a very brief uh, court hearing here in the urgent uh, uh, court at the Pretoria High Court, so it will be back um, in a few days uh, where we will hear the formal arguments. And really to take me uh, through some of the finer details of this legal battle, I'm now joined by Solidarity's legal head, Anton van der Beyl. Just in short, um, you know, outline the crux of why um, uh, uh, solidarity and of course uh, in line with Afri Forum has brought the Department of Tourism to court once again. It's not the first time that we see this matter in court but you are back here. Outline the finer details for us. Yeah, it's a quite unfortunate matter but we say enough is enough. The minister in a, in a crisis situation decided that funds must be allocated on a race base. We say this is a crisis situation. You sit with the sector on its knees and uh, funds cannot be allocated on a race basis. It must be allocated based on socio-economic needs and the needs of the sector. The minister last year when the matter was brought to court by um, Afri Forum at the time, she made it very clear that uh, the uh, arguments that she has brought forward are in line with uh, the uh, country's race uh, policies and so forth. And she had used her discretion in terms of applying um, you know, some of uh, those uh, protocols. Uh, what's your response to this? Well, our argument at this point in time in this matter is uh, there is no su uh, substantive reason for the fund being allocated on race. And if you allocate it on race, then you must you have certain procedural points that you must ensure has, has been complied with. You must uh, comply with the Black Economic Empowerment Act. And we argue that the minister in this specific matter hasn't complied with the Black Economic Empowerment Act. The act was enacted by itself, the regulations was enacted by itself, and when you have a fund that's based on race, it must, it must comply with the Black Econo Economic Empowerment Act. And why do you so strongly feel that it's not uh, compliant? Um, I remember last year when I did interview um, Kali Kirill, he was actually also opposed to the fact that um, the uh, Black Economic Act is um, uh, uh, implemented in, in terms of uh, the minister's arguments and affirmative action and all um, you know, those uh, transforma transformation uh, related to principles. So just in short, why do you feel that she's not compliant? in terms of that? Well, you sit with the sector in dire straits, the sector on its knees. The, the government in this crisis situation limited our right to f of freedom to uh, go out of our homes. Uh, they limited several rights. We cannot understand when you sit with the crisis situation and when you sit with the sector on its knees, uh, the right to, uh, to black economic empowerment and black economic economic empowerment funds cannot be limited to ensure that funds be allocated where there is dire need for that funds. So uh, on Friday the case has been postponed. Uh, we're coming back exactly for uh, what uh, as uh, of course the judge did say earlier. Well, we'll come back for arguments. Both, both of the parties have uh, complied with the pleadings procedures and yeah, all the parties will argue. We'll argue that the uh, urgent interdict be granted to solidarity and hopefully we'll su succeed with the matter. Right, we'll have to leave it at there. Anton van der Beyl, he is uh, the head of Solidarity Legal. Just uh, they're outlining the basis of uh, their case. Of course, on Friday, as you heard, we'll be back for the formal 
arguments in this matter. The judge only received both legal teams' uh, heads of arguments yesterday, so he did say in court that he needs more time to peruse um, uh, those heads of arguments and, of course, prepare. And hence, he um, you know, decided that the matter should only be heard uh, on Friday, and that will give all the parties in court, including himself, um, you know, the right uh, foundation, legal foundation, to understand exactly what the merits of this case is. Friday, we will be back in court to bring you an update, a blow-by-blow blow, blow blow update on t in terms of what exactly this court case um, uh, uh, aims uh, to achieve. Desiree, it's back to you in studio. Patricia Fesachi, thank you so much for that update.